Woodstock. Just the name itself recalls an event so significant that it has become the iconic and idyllic representation of an entire generation. Only 400,000 or so actually got to attend the 60-hour event, which was spread between a highly anticipated Friday night and a very spent Monday morning. For three and a half days, there was one focal point for everything that took place at Woodstock. That was the stage. The 8,000 square feet of magic brought everyone together, watching the amazing acts, listening to the necessary and at times life-saving announcements, it all came from the stage. After the festival, we might expect the center of the rock and roll universe to be enshrined in a museum where people could come and appreciate it, recollect over it while they spin yarns about it to their children and grandchildren. But that's not the way it happened. So about three weeks after Labor Day, which is about five weeks, four weeks after Woodstock, they started selling everything that was used to build the Woodstock, whether it was the stage, whether it was the light poles, whatever it was, they sold it. I was at my girlfriend's parents' bungalow colony, who uh, was about 15 miles from uh, Woodstock, and right after Labor Day, bungalow colonies tend to start building for the following season, you know, building bungalows, making renovations, and I'm there one day and he asked me if I would help him unload this wood that he has on his truck. You know, I'm trying to be nice because I'm dating his daughter, you know. Oh, of course. So uh, I'm helping him unload the wood, and as we're unloading it, he says to me, you know, I just bought this wood at Bethel. This is the stage that they were selling, and I bought it. And about two years ago, I'm, just, I'm lying in bed because I'm always, you know, thinking about Woodstock, and I said, holy crap, I remember Alex Gray telling me he built this paddleball court with the wood from the stage. Uh, so we go there, and where I look where the paddleball court, and my head's not there. You know, I guess 48 years ago, I had a different vision of where things were, and we were about to leave. And my friend says, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's that all the way in the woods? So we go there, and there was the paddleball court that I remember, and it had Robbie Lane you know, painted white the way he painted it. So we asked the owners for permission to take down some of the, you know, panels, which we did. And when we took them down, we found the logos and the markings from the Woodstock stage. So that's how we knew we had the real stage. For someone so heavily involved with Woodstock, uh, it was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is still here. This is the stage that the greatest acts performed on. Uh, this was the focal point of what Woodstock was. Everything congregated to the stage. Whether the speeches that were made, you know, the famous speeches, New York State Thruway is closed, breakfast in bed for 400,000. Everything emanated from that stage. We felt this would be another perfect story about the magic of Woodstock, that this stage still exists in the shape that it exists. It really was peace and love. Everybody was equal, whether you were a performer, whether you were the, in the audience, whether you were a construction worker. There was no VIP passes, there was no backstage passes, and it happened because it became a free concert. We took a piece of stage to the uh, Long Island Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Michael Lang uh, and Artie Kornfeld were inducted into the Long Island Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I brought a, a a plaque to give to Michael with the piece of stage. And as I'm walking through the crowd, the way we have the memorabilia is you can touch the stage. So it's not, you can feel the, you know, you touch it, you feel the magic. And it was just amazing how everybody stopped to touch it. You know, in the comments, oh, is this where, you know, Jerry Garcia played? Is this where Jimmy did his? You know, everyone started fantasizing and you can see the smiles on their faces as they touch this. When we uh, wanted to make sure that uh, these, this was the actual Woodstock stage, when we took off the panels, one of the first panels we saw was a piece of uh, wood with the same colors that matched an uh, iconic picture of Richie Havens playing. And you can see the different colors uh, on the back that we have on the uh, piece of wood. 
And the other thing that we were excited about is that we saw the Weyerheiser logo, which is uh, around the pieces of wood that you also see in Richie Haven's stage. So when we saw this, we also got very excited knowing that this is the real thing. Somebody was watching over Yazgur's farm, and I believe somebody was watching over this stage for 48 years. And, you know, we hope people, it'll bring a good feel into the house. So when people go into someone's house and they see it, they get a good vibe. There, there's no one you can talk to to mention the word Woodstock where a smile doesn't come over their face. We believe the stage brings that spirit of Woodstock. That, that's what I think we're, we're, we're going to try to sell. And, and I, I believe that people will look at it that way, that they're buying a piece of magic 